and here we are in the port of Nice behind me you can see a yacht which has been built to a very high specification and I strongly suspect it also costs an awful lot of money now in this video we're going to be looking at a watch that has caused a little bit of a stir in the watch fraternity because it is also at least on paper built to a very high specification but it doesn't cost a great deal of money and that watch is the Starking AM0184 now this watch has a sapphire crystal it's got a gorgeous stainless steel case it's got an exhibition back that looks in to a really fine movement that beats at 28,800 beats per hour which is exactly the same as a lot of the Rolex movements so in this video I am going to do the full watchmakers review and give you guys the real information on this really interesting watch by Starking. And that is what is producing the winding effect. Okay, so we're now out in the afternoon sun and I've chosen a spot where the light is really, really nice so we can have a thorough examination close up of this really interesting watch by Starking. And uh, a couple of days ago when I reviewed the Vostok Amphibian, um, I used a little bit of twig that I found from the path uh, to point stuff out. Um, I thought the Star King deserved more than that. So you can see the pen um, that I've got there and I shall use the nib of that. Um, uh, and it's a Mont Blanc. And I think it might even be real. Um, <laughs> so uh, maybe not, who knows. So the Star King is real. So let's, let's focus in on that now and start to have a really good look at that. There we go get that in focus that's good okay so you know I'm gonna deal first with the thing that I don't like about this uh, watch at least from the outside and that is the date window as you can see on the face of the watch there we have a small date window there's no surround to it uh, the date is not actually completely aligned properly as you can see the um, there's more space at the bottom of the digits than there are at the top and from my liking as an aesthetic point of view I I'd rather it wasn't there at all because apart from that the the purity and simplicity of this dial I think is really really nice we've got the you know, we've got the sword hands there which are a sort of resonant of, of Grand Seiko um, and also things like the you know Tissot Viso Day and, and watches like that but it, it's a kind of nine, late 1950s 1960s look um, which is carried through to today and and carried through because it's it's elegant and it's stylish but the date window to my mind looks a little bit lost there and also you know with the date not confidently sitting in the middle of the window so you know having got that out of the way um, I do have to say though before leaving it that at least there is a date um, so if you're looking at this from a, a functional point of view we have a set of calendar works behind the dial there which makes the movement more complex and therefore uh, normally more expense um, and of course the thing about this watch I was looking on the internet last night and you can buy this watch for $51 uh, which is just remarkable and I'm gonna tell you why it's remarkable now because you know I think we're about to leave the one thing that I 
you know don't like and I, and, and I don't hate it you know it's useful I just think it looks a little bit lost on the dial there so now let's start to talk about things that we we do like so getting in a little bit closer um, we have a you know, beautiful black dial uh, with uh, applied indices uh, with you know Arabic uh, 12 and 6 uh, in the 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock position unsurprisingly and then those uh, little hour markers um, like sword ends uh, you know which which are classic uh, sort of cocktail watch design but as you can see as I kind of move the watch in the light here um, it is really really pretty and really really elegant looking at the crown a moment um, you can see that I use green ink in my pen um, and it's not rust that's green ink um, we have got a crown with the Star King logo on it let me just see if I can come in a little bit closer on that okay when we get this back to the watch bench we'll have a really good close look on it but that's you know not um, badly implemented uh, and a nice little touch just come out again there and back into there and what I want you to notice here though is the um, the polish on the stainless steel case and you know as you can see with this watch um, we have I mean it's so good actually you can see my ugly mug there <laughs> doing the recording you know um, that's funny I actually that's interesting I never seen that before you know I've looked at a lot of watches um, and I never seen uh, myself in the case like you can see there uh, you know hideous as it is um, uh, if if you just focus on the polish on this stainless steel you know this is supposed to be a dress watch um, and you know to my mind in terms of its looks it is ticking all the boxes it is uh, very very elegant and very very shiny and if you look at the way the crystal is applied there it looks it looks great um, and that as I say is sapphire crystal you know um, and this watch cost you can buy it for um, at least with a leather strap not this uh, stainless steel bracelet um, for $51 I'm not quite sure how this 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 one I think maybe a little bit more maybe up to $70 or something like that but um you know this is this is pretty amazing um, so let's have a quick look through the back what we're going to do I'm going to take this watch back to the watch bench um, uh, I'm going to so I'm going to take this watch I'm going to take this watch back to the watch bench in the United Kingdom and open up this movement and have a really really good look inside the movement but you can see the balance working away there it's beating at 28,800 beats per hour which is the frequency you know that uh, a lot of high-end watches uh, beat at so you know if you're looking at the Rolex 3135 3235 uh, you know the one um, that I uh, have recently done a complete service on which is the Rolex 2135 the ladies version and if you click on the card that you can see there you can see me do a full service of that Rolex watch um, this this is an interesting little movement in here uh, the exhibition window has some printing on it uh, you can see that you they can see they've put the Starking logo printing um, uh, and when you first look at it you think that actually it's it's something that's attached to the rotor arm but it isn't it is silver printing um, on the exhibition back glass there actually I'm not sure you know I'm particularly fond of it but then again it is some branding so you know you've got to you've got to give these guys their due they you know they're they're presenting this you know very shiny watch an aggressive price we 
maybe have to forgive them for you know shouting out their own brand proudly because just maybe they've got something to shout about here anyway let's have a little look at the keyless works um, we can uh, it, it, there is no screw down crown um, I'm not sure what this is rated at is was water resistant um, but you know with no screw down crown uh, it, it, you really don't want to get the watch particularly wet um, you know there almost certainly will be inside uh, underneath the crown there there will almost certainly be a, a, a rubber gasket as it goes into the case um, but there is and a train is going by a um, very long train uh, from Nice to Monaco so underneath the crown here um, on the stem there will almost certainly be a little rubber o-ring uh, which will uh, fit inside the pendant tube and help keep water out but guys you know that is not really um, good water resistance if you want water resistance you need a screw down crown so in this position with this movement um, you can actually just wind the watch which is great because uh, it's not like a um, you know dive watch where you have to uh, unscrew the crown you can simply just wind the watch straight away anytime you like and of course um, it's winding itself all the time because the rotor arm that you can see there at the back is turning all the time that you're wearing your watch and um, putting power onto the mainspring so let's now just uh, try the first position out we click it one position out and that should give us the automatic date change which it does okay and actually um, as I change the date here these these uh, dates digits are sitting uh, more nicely in the window so that's a that's a good thing there um, that's good so let's now pull it out to the second position and that gives us the ability to set the time you'll notice that the second hand stops um, and that's because the movement is a hacking movement which is good um, so that you can set the time completely accurately we've got a nice amount of friction there with the uh, hands um, so I can you know as I turn the hands here uh, the friction is stiff enough for accurate setting of the hands to be possible so as you notice as I come up to set them I can kind of slow down and it doesn't go loose on me so by pushing the crown back in straight in like that the second hand will start up again so that all looks to be operating really well so an analysis of the or an inspection rather of the outside of this watch um, including the bracelet I mean let's have a quick look at the bracelet um, the way this catches the light is really really nice I mean, look at that that is lovely the way that these links on the inside are really shined up to a high gloss and then lightly brushed on the outside and of course you know there is no you know cheap stamped uh, deployment clasp this is a proper shiny deployment clasp um, you know with the proper release mechanism here so um, that's a good job as well the, uh, let me just put the thing on so you can see it on the wrist for size. Just take off my common dursky and pop that there. There we go. And then just pop this on the wrist. Okay. And let's, there it is on the wrist. Let's, let's just pan out now and out. And there we go. So the um, bracelet is a little bit small for me so I've not done it up but as you can see um, on the wrist this looks you know if you wear this with a suit um, it looks really really you know pucker I would say um, particularly the way the case is it's kind of scooped up there like sort of the looks like some kind of lunar 
landing module. <laughs> anyway, what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to take this watch back to the United Kingdom and put it on my watch bench. We're going to open it right up and take a look at this movement because I don't know uh, a huge amount about this movement other than that that it beats at 28,800 beats per second. Um, so it warrants thorough inspection. But so far, uh, I have to say that this watch, particularly if the date window doesn't bother you in the way that it kind of troubles me a little bit, it's only a little thing, but you know, it's there. Um, if that doesn't bother you, uh, right now, I'm thinking that there is nothing about this watch which is bad and there is one thing that is very very good about it and that is you can buy the thing for seventy dollars or so which um you know i've not had a look at the movement yet but uh you know i'm gonna have to be pretty surprised by something dire for this uh review to go pear-shaped for this watch but uh, you know, it's not over as they say to the fat lady sings. Let's take the watch back to the UK. Let's get it on the watch bench. Let's open it up. So I'm going to do that now. And here we are then back in UK. Thank you very much Easy Jeff for a nice flight and time to get these watches back to the watch bench. Let's do it. And we're now back at the watch bench in Pembroke Dock and uh, in the United Kingdom. And the first thing I wanted to show you was the letter that came with this watch. As I say, this watch was uh, sent to me for review by my man, Andy. Um, but I just wanted to show you guys the letter that came with it. I mean, I'm a lover of Victorian pocket watches and every so often you see some copper plate writing, but Ah, this was a joy to receive. You know, in a in a world where everything is emails, this letter was great. Anyway, I have to move on. We're going to put the watch on the time graph for now, give it a good wind, uh, see how it performs. And then I am going to take the movement out and check out uh, the movement. So let's do that now. Okay, and now we have the watch on the time grapher. I've given it a good wind to make sure that it's got every chance of getting a good result. You need to have, you know, enough power on the spring to give the movement a chance of performing. So I've done that. So let's turn the time grapher on now and see what it's telling us. Okay, so this is where uh, we start to learn a little bit about what is going on inside the movement. The first observation that I would make is the amplitude is a little bit low. So the balance really isn't swinging far enough either side. You can see the amplitude there is at 212 degrees. I need to be careful because I don't know the lift angle on this movement, So, uh, but it's dropped to 201. Yeah, the, the, the amplitude is a little bit low, which is not great. Um, the, the, the rate is pretty good. We're plus six seconds a day. That's not too bad. And the beat error is tolerable, um, 0.4 milliseconds. So let's just try it in a few other positions. Um, now, in fact, I'll I'll try it in other positions uh, and publish those on my blog. So if you if you want to see how the watch performed in other positions, then just click on the card. It'll take you through to the written article. Um, but yeah, this in terms of performance is tolerable. Um, it's the kind of thing that you might see from, you know, an eight-year-old Seiko. You know, I'm very used to seeing readouts looking like this. It is not a uh, Swiss chronometer readout um, in which I would get, you know, a very straight line with very little variance on the time 
coming across the screen there. You can see this is a bit messy and generally we're looking at plus 20 seconds a day with a little bit of a low amplitude which, which is a bit worrying. Anyway, let's open up the movement and, and see what's going on there. And here is the watch then open and immediately there are some things that I like and some things that I don't like so much. So uh, let's take a look firstly at the things that I like. And turning first to this nice big jewel here. Now that is the mainspring barrel. And you know, normally on a lot of watches, this isn't jeweled. Okay, uh, and you know, only um, in or at least it used to be the case that only in the sort of best watches would you find a dirty great jewel on the arbor of the of the mainspring barrel. So so that's a, that's a good thing I would say. Um, also, uh, we've got shock protection. Um, this is uh, sort of a dire shock clone here um, on the top end of the balance, and you can bet your bottom dollar it'll also be at the bottom end. Also, small point, but um, if you're a watchmaker, important, the clip retaining the uh, cap screw here, um, capstone I should say, is uh, really, really quite easy to operate um, and less likely to fly across the room than some of the other models that you've got. So you know, thank you, um, whomever produced this movement. Um, the balance is turning there nicely, as you can see. Um, so let's turn to things that I don't like so much about this movement. Um, and the first and most important is the operation of the automatic works. The automatic works on this movement is not um, uh, bi-directional. It, it doesn't work in both directions. It only works in one direction. And in fact, the rotor arm only really wants to kind of turn in the way that it's easiest to turn. Um, if I spin it round, it loves to go that way round. But if I try and turn it the other way, it doesn't want to turn so much because there is tension on that. And that is what is producing the winding effect. Um, and if you see, you can probably, if I'm quiet for a second, you might even be able to hear it. Okay, as the, the uh, watch is rocking around a little bit in the case holder there. So, you know, that's not great. That is not the most efficient way of uh, getting power from the rotor arm to the main spring. That is a bit of a cop out. Um, so, you know, a good automatic watch winds in both directions. This one doesn't. Um, uh, but you have to remember this watch cost $51 right there. Um, cleanliness of the movement, that looks good, I would say. I'm just turning now to the other thing that I don't like, and that is this plastic movement holder. Uh, not that it's not practical and not that it doesn't work. It's just a bugbear of mine. I think they're a little bit cheap. I don't really like them. Um, and, you know, I like to see a metal movement holder in there. We have a lot of jewels in this movement. You can see them dotted around the place. Pretty much everywhere there's a pivot, I can see a jewel. Um, so that's good. I think then, in terms of the movement inside this watch, they have made a good balance of, you know, complexity against cost um, and a trade-off between the amount of hours they're gonna spend uh, or someone's going to spend regulating the watch and I strongly suspect that is actually measured in you know minutes um, literally uh, to push enough of these out of the door to make some profit on the small margin that Star King are working on here so you know the movement is a little bit up and down um, there are some really nice features on on it and there are some things that are a little bit weak and the watch can could do with some regulation. Okay, so that's a quick look at the moment. Let's now go and sum up what we think of this watch by Starking. 
Okay, so with the balance there beating away at 28,800 beats per hour, let's have a look now at what we think in summary on this. Okay, with the balance there beating away nicely at 28,800 beats per hour, I'm going to look at the engineering and build quality of the watch. I'm going to look at the value for money and I'm going to look at you know how the watch looks um, and it's actually the looks I'm going to start with. Now this watch for a elegant cocktail watch notwithstanding the things that I said about the date window which is you know personal taste on on my point of view um, and therefore you know of limited interest I think they have done really a very good job here with with the look of this watch it's classic it's elegant it's got the whole you know cocktail watch thing going on it's it's also quite minimalist in a way you know it, the we've, we've got the plain black dial and the little sword end indices there we've got the applied indices at the 12 and the 6 um the little star king logo but nothing's too in your face or dramatic it's elegant and you know even the case is beautifully polished the case design is is a little bit different to what you often see with the way it scoops up from the back of the watch exhibition window uh, to the wider diameter of the dial um, and as i say beautifully polished it's it's a really really good job on looks so i'm going to score this watch nine out of ten for looks i was tempted to give it 9.5 but that date window is is niggling with me guys if you don't mind the date window if you like it then you know feel free to score it yourself 10 out of 10 um up to you you know this is always a little bit subjective this part of the analysis anyway but there we have it looks is a very strong nine out of ten so let's now look at the engineering build quality now with a price tag of you know fifty one dollars or whatever it is you you're not going to expect total quality throughout because you know we live in a world where you know if it looks too good to be true it it, it probably is um and I do have to say that, you know, they have done a really, really good job for $51 here. Um, but just take the money aside for one moment and look at the quality of the different parts of the watch. So let's look at the quality of the case. Okay, so let's deal with the case. Well, the case is robust, it's business-like, it's nicely polished. It gets a nine out of 10. The crystal, guys, the, the crystal is sapphire. Um, sapphire crystal for $51. It gets a nine out of 10. The movement, okay. So this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. The movement, you know, it is stuffed full of jewels. I mean, you can see there are three of them right there. I mean, in fact, no, there aren't there five if you if you count the ones on the pallet fork as well. Um, an actual fact, there's two inside the uh, the die shock at the top there as well. So that's that's even more. There are a shed load of jewels in this movement, and jewels as long as they're correctly applied and uh, not cracked or anything like that, make for a good movement. So on that side of life you know we're looking at a pretty nice movement here but the automatic works are you know a little bit of a cop out they only work in one direction that saves a few cogs in the uh, mechanism there there are no reversing wheels essentially uh, in the automatic works and that saves complexity and it also saves cost um, and it makes for not such a good automatic movement. So that takes away a little bit from the movement. And also 
the regulation of this movement is not good. So, you know, this I think are the two weak points here. Uh, we've got a movement that I'm going to score 7 out of 10. And I'm also going to score the regulation. I'm dancing between 6.5 and 7. But, you know, I just had a great holiday in um, France. So I'm feeling good and I'm going to score it a 7. <laughs> it ain't that bad. I've seen a lot worse. So... Uh, there is no loom. Um, you wouldn't expect it on this type of watch. And the water resistance is quoted down to 50 meters, but we're not going to test that. This is this watch is for, for wearing with a suit. Um, so, you know, unless you go into the swimming pool because uh, it's that kind of party, then, um, you know, you're not going to need, hopefully, a greater deal of water resistance. You are not going to be diving or swimming with this watch. I don't recommend it. So what have we got then? Let's sum all of this up now. Okay, so let's sum up the scores for this watch now. Now, for looks, I gave a score of 9 out of 10. It's a good looking watch. You can wear this watch with a suit with absolute confidence. No problem at all. For engineering build quality, and this is where I thought we would go astray, turns out we didn't go astray too far because I gave it a score of 8.2 in average across the different uh, components that I looked at. That's 8.2 out of 10. Now, lastly, let's look at value for money. Well, guys, this watch cost... $51 or you know $70 with the bracelet you know it is a, a bargain basement price uh, and you're getting a hell of a lot of watch here for that money so I gave it a score of 10 out of 10 now that lot totaled up gives a final score for this watch of a very very impressive 9.1 out of 10. So there we have it, guys. Uh, maybe the hype is all worth it. Uh, you cannot go far wrong with this particular watch. It's not the greatest movement in the world, but you're only paying $51 or thereabouts. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of good things about that movement. It's absolutely stuffed full of jewels and it beats at a very, very nice, sensible rate of 28,800 beats per hour. So, you know, in summary, this watch is a good buy. If you are in the market for a watch that looks like this or you'd like to give someone a present, maybe, that um, that could do with a with a decent watch at a, 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 a at an aggressive price. So, guys, there it is, the Star King AM zero one eight four. You know, turns out to be a pretty good watch for the money, uh, scoring a very very high nine point one. In my humble opinion, having taken a really good look at this watch. So you can pretty much buy at that price with confidence, I believe. Guys, if you like my channel, then please subscribe, give this video a like, hit the little bell there so that you get alerted. But from the watch bench here in Pembroke Dock, that's all I've got for you in this video. So cheerio and God bless.